And now, hidden from cipher over to millennia, ancient steps have been unveiled at the renowned ancient pool of Siloam in Jerusalem, a site of profound significance in both the New and Old Testaments. And out of his William Sharon has more on this historic discovery. In the heart of Jerusalem, and amidst the sacred sites and bustling streets, a terrifying event has suddenly occurred, shaking the very foundation of the holy city. This recent incident triggered a wave of uncertainty, forcing religious faithful in the holy city to confront a fearful reality. The peaceful ambience of Jerusalem was shattered by this unsettling revelation, prompting a large number of believers to seek refuge from the looming threat. But what exactly happened to ignite such fear? And how will it impact the lives of those who call this sacred city home? Join us as we delve deep into the heart of Jerusalem's terrifying incident that has left Christians evacuating as a whole, Israel, and resurging conflicts. Since its establishment, Israel has faced a rough journey, marked by periods of conflict and tension. From the busty streets of Tel Aviv to the historic sites of Jerusalem, the nation is constantly on edge, with the shade of violence lurking in the background. In addition to the recent clashes with Hamas, Israel has a long history of defending itself against various threats. The Iron Dome defense system, which intercepts incoming missiles, stands as a symbol of Israel's resilience in the face of adversity. For Israel, the key to defending the country against air attacks is something called the Iron Dome system, which kicks in most but not all the time. Imagine the event in a small city in southern Israel. As residents hear the sharp moan of sirens, signaling the coming danger overhead, it's a moment of severe fear and tension by the roar of explosions as the Iron Dome springs into action, protecting the city from harm. But the threats to Israel's security extend beyond its borders. The Houthi movement in Lebanon, fueled by anger towards Israeli actions, has repeatedly launched missiles and drones toward Israeli territory. Each attack sends shockwaves through the nation, leaving its citizens on edge and constantly vigilant. Yet amidst the confusion and uncertainty, there is a glimmer of hope. People from all corners of the globe, including Christians, are offering their prayers and support to Israel. They stand in solidarity with the nation, hoping for a swift end to the violence and a return to peace. Meanwhile, in the ancient streets of Jerusalem, archaeological discoveries continue to unearth secrets from the past. Every dig holds the promise of uncovering hidden treasures, shedding light on the rich history of this sacred city. During the unrest of war, these discoveries serve as a reminder of Israel's enduring legacy and the strength of its people. The lost legacy of Jerusalem's Pool of Selom in the broad and captivating history of Jerusalem emerges as an important symbol. This extraordinary site, installed in the lower part of ancient Jerusalem, known as the Lower City during the Second Temple Period, sits proudly at an impressive height of 625 meters above sea level. To journey from here to the iconic Temple Mount, one had to conquer a peak change of about 115 meters across a distance of approximately 634 meters. According to the stories in the Jerusalem Talmud, the Pool of Siloam was not just a mere water source. It held serious importance as the starting point for pilgrims undertaking their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem. It was here that their climb to the Temple Mount began, a journey marked by the joyful distribution of sweets in the temple courtyards, indicating the celebratory nature of the occasion. Moreover, the Pool of Siloam served as a sacred refuge for purification rituals, where pilgrims would engage themselves before proceeding to the revered Temple Mount for spiritual fulfillment. During the reign of Hezekiah, this historical landmark underwent a remarkable transformation. Hezekiah, recognizing the importance of safeguarding the city's water supply from likely threats, initiated a driving project. He authorized the construction of the remarkable Siloam Tunnel, a feat of engineering brilliance that replaced an older Canaanite structure. Faced with the looming danger of attack by the Assyrian king Sennacherib, Hezekiah made the strategic decision to seal the original outlet of the Jian Spring, redirecting the water flow through this newly constructed tunnel. Thus, the Pool of Siloam not only served as a spiritual hub, but also bore witness to the imagination and strength of Jerusalem's citizens in the face of hardship. During a crucial period in Jerusalem's history, there's an interesting story recorded in the ancient Book of Two history. Back in the day, what was now called the Pool of Siloam was known as the Lower Pool, a term found in the Biblical Book of Isaiah. Additionally, there was an older Upper Pool linked to an ancient Canaanite tunnel, mentioned in both 2 Kings chapter 18 and Isaiah chapter 7. 
As time progressed into the Second Temple era, significant renovations were carried out on the pool, likely spearheaded during the reign of Alexander the Great, somewhere between 103 and 76 BCE. This site wasn't just a reservoir, it served as a busy center of activity during Jesus' time. In the Gospel of John, there's a compelling account where Jesus directs a blind man to the pool for a miraculous healing. The Pool of Siloam held deeper significance beyond its physical purpose. It likely served as a gathering spot for spiritual pilgrims, possibly utilized for ritual cleansings, despite its size restricting traditional mikvahs. However, the pool met a tragic fate during the First Jewish-Roman War in 70 CE. The Romans and their domination destroyed the pool, changing its destiny. Over the centuries, sediment from the surrounding hills gradually covered the site, burying its history beneath layers of earth. Accounts from ancient times, mainly from the Roman and Byzantine periods, tell stories of Emperor Hadrian, who around 135 CE clearly built a shrine dedicated to four nymphs. While historians debate whether this shrine stood in the same spot as the famed Pool of Siloam, it set the stage for future constructions during the Byzantine era. Fast forward to the reign of Empress Aaliyah Eudoxia, and an outstanding architectural effort unfolded. This driving project aimed to create a reservoir near Hezekiah's Tunnel, a well-known landmark. However, this reservoir differed greatly from the ancient Salam Pool, a reminder from the era of the Second Jewish Temple. Despite its differences, the essence and importance of this historic site remained hidden in mystery until recent archaeological findings unveiled its secrets. A journey through time and faith held within the ancient city of Jerusalem, established by King David over 2,000 years ago, lies the unusual Siloam Pool. This historical reservoir has captivated minds for centuries, surrounded by interest. The teams of dedicated archaeologists tirelessly delve into its depths, driven by the desire to unveil the private tales hidden within its ancient walls. The Siloam Pool, a wonder of ancient engineering dating back to around the 7th century BCE, stands as proof of Jerusalem's advanced hydraulic system of yore. Fed by the vital Jihon Spring, this reservoir served as a lifeline for the surrounding region. Its detailed supply network weaves through underground tunnels. The Siloam Pool was not merely a source of water for the people of ancient Jerusalem. It was a hub of activity, a gathering place where locals would come to collect water, socialize, and perhaps even partake in religious ceremonies. Imagine the hustle and bustle around its shores as merchants traded goods and families shared news of the day. As centuries passed, the Siloam Pool witnessed the ebb and flow of Jerusalem's wild history. From the reigns of David and Solomon to the Roman occupation and beyond, it stood as a silent witness to the city's victories and sufferings. As archaeologists carefully excavate its surroundings, they uncover not just artifacts, but elements of daily life from centuries past. Broken stoneware, ancient coins, and even traces of long-forgotten structures offer tantalizing glimpses into the lives of those who once called Jerusalem. As Princess Eudoxia's stories captivated the imaginations of the people, they sought to honor her with a big temple. The temple itself was a sight to notice, adorned with detailed carvings, and overlooking sections that reached towards the sky. Nearby, the Siloam Pool beckoned pilgrims and travelers alike. This sacred site was believed to hold healing powers, drawing crowds who sought relief and renewal in its peaceful waters. In June of 2004, as workers looked after the city's water system, they stumbled upon a hidden gem, an ancient staircase leading to the Siloam Pool. With each step, they uncovered more of the pool's history, revealing a look into the daily lives of those who once gathered there. As the excavation continued, archaeologists uncovered not just a pool, but a gateway to the past. A busty lake, overflowing with life and activity during the time of Jesus. The square shape of the lake indicated its ancient origins, while its angled ends offered a dramatic view of the surrounding landscape. Amidst the ruins, remnants of offerings and artifacts spoke of the deep spiritual significance of the site. It was more than just a place of gathering. It was a sanctuary where the divine crossed with the human world. With each discovery, the puzzle of the past began to take shape, revealing a hanging of connections between history, faith, and daily life in ancient Jerusalem. And as the waters of the Siloam Pool continued to flow, they carried with them the stories of a bygone era, waiting to be uncovered by those who dared to explore its depths. The Miraculous Healing at the Pool of Siloam In the year 29 AD, a remarkable event unfolded in Jerusalem. Jesus, a revered figure known for his wisdom and ability to heal, 
engaged in a profound discussion with the Pharisees, the religious scholars of the time. During their dialogue, a blind man, conditioned to darkness his entire life, unexpectedly encountered Jesus. The amazement swept through the crowd as Jesus gently applied clay to the blind man's eyes. This simple yet unusual indication marked the beginning of an extraordinary transformation. Jesus then instructed the man to wash in the nearby pool of Siloam. Little did he realize that this seemingly ordinary task would bring about a miraculous change. As the blind man followed Jesus' guidance and engaged himself in the waters of Siloam, a sense of anxiety filled the air. Suddenly, before the eyes of all those gathered, an amazing event unfolded. The blind man regained his sight in an instant. The surprise and wonder consumed the onlookers as they witnessed this incredible moment. Word of the miraculous healing spread rapidly throughout the city, provoking emotional discussions among religious leaders and scholars. At the heart of the debate was the understanding of the Sabbath law, a spiritual principle that dictated strict observance of rest on the seventh day of the week. One group argued that Jesus had violated this law by performing a healing on the Sabbath. While acknowledging the compassionate purpose behind the act, they argued that it should have been postponed to a non-sacred day. Charges flew, with some accusing Jesus of disobeying established religious customs and boundaries. In the wake of this extraordinary event, Jerusalem flew with belief in a fair, as people seized with the serious implications of what had occurred. The healing of the blind man causes deeper reflection on tradition, compassion, and the power of faith to challenge established norms. On the opposite side of the argument were those who stressed how kind and caring Jesus was in his actions. They believed that when he healed people, it was a way of showing love and kindness, demonstrating what the Sabbath was truly about. To them, the Sabbath wasn't just about following rules strictly while ignoring people's pain. Instead, it was supposed to be a day of making things better, of healing, and of setting people free. This sparked some deep discussions among scholars who pored over old writings, trying to understand the context of the time, and finding new ways to think about Sabbath rules. They brought up ideas about compassion and treating people with respect. All this talk came to a head when Jesus healed someone at a place called the Pool of Siloam. It became a symbol of the clash between sticking to old ways and embracing change, between being strict about rules. This challenged what people thought was normal, and made them think again about what religious rules meant, especially when there's a lot of suffering in the world. This whole debate made people think about faith and what it means to be spiritual. It made them ask some tough questions. Why do we have religious rules? How should we understand and follow them when people are hurting? And what does it mean to be kind? These questions don't have easy answers. And everyone might see things a bit differently depending on what they believe and what they've been through. A gateway to ancient faith and modern doubt. Discovering an ancient pool that looks just like the one described in the Bible is like stepping into a time machine. Their mind can hardly believe it as it stands there, feeling a chill run down their backbone. It's as if they've been pushed away to a distant past where they can almost touch the threads of history weaving together. This is exactly what happened when archaeologists uncovered the Pool of Siloam. This incredible find sparked a storm of speculation. People wondered if it could provide real evidence that the Bible stories weren't just fairy tales but were grounded in actual events. For Christians, seeing the biblical pool and its archaeological twin was like finding a piece of their faith's puzzle. It was a concrete reminder that the events written in their sacred texts might have truly happened. It strengthened their trust in the miraculous stories recounted in the Bible. Yet not everyone was quick to accept this revelation. Some doubters raised thoughtful arguments questioning the connection between the pool and the biblical stories. They rightly pointed out that even if the pool of Siloam did exist, it did not simply prove the truth of the supernatural events described in the Bible. They urged caution, reminding us that the very existence of the pool did not guarantee the accuracy of every aspect of the story. This interesting debate has sparked critical thinking, nurturing both faith and doubt. The Pool of Siloam has become a focal point of discussion, giving rise to diverse interpretations regarding its significance. While there is an agreement that the Pool exists and that a man named Jesus may have performed healing miracles there, believers understand it as powerful evidence of Jesus' divine power and proof of the incredible events that unfolded in his life. Atheists, on the other hand, offer more natural explanations, suggesting that the healings could have been the result of emotional events or ancient knowledge of natural remedies. 
In addition to these viewpoints, historians and archaeologists have also contributed fascinating insights into the cultural and historical context surrounding the Pool of Selom. They have uncovered details about the construction of the pool, its role in ancient Jerusalem's water supply system, and its significance in rituals and religious practices of the time. Moreover, the Pool of Siloam has been a site of adventure for centuries, attracting travelers from far and wide who seek spiritual enlightenment or hope for healing. Stories abound of individuals who claim to have experienced miraculous recoveries or profound spiritual awakenings after visiting the pool. Despite the passage of time and the evolution of beliefs, the Pool of Siloam continues to captivate the imagination and inspire attention to the corner of faith, history, and the mysteries of the human experience. The miraculous Pool of Bethesda, as they explore the pools in Jerusalem, they find pools that are deeply connected with healing and have great historical importance in the Christian tradition. One such notable site is the Pool of Bethesda, often confused with the Pool of Siloam. Although they are both important for religious and historical reasons, the Pool of Bethesda stands out with more detailed stories and less mystery surrounding it. Located near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, the Pool of Bethesda is mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible, specifically in the Gospel of John. According to the tale, the pool was a gathering spot for many seeking healing. People believe that occasionally an angel would come and stir the waters, and the first person to step in after this event would be cured of their ailment. This story has made the Pool of Bethesda famous for its association with miraculous healing. The Pool of Bethesda is described as having five covered walkways around it, providing shade and shelter for those who gather there. This created a lively and busy atmosphere, where people came together in hopes of finding relief from their sufferings. Beyond its healing reputation, the Pool of Bethesda also served as a social hub in ancient Jerusalem. It was not just a place for seeking cures, but also a meeting point for friends and families. People would gather there to catch up, exchange news, and offer support to one another. It was a melting pot of emotions, with prayers, laughter, and occasional tears echoing within its corridors. Moreover, the architecture of the pool itself, it was a miracle of its time. The five covered walkways not only provided shelter, but also added a sense of brilliance to the place. The Pool of Bethesda, tucked away in the heart of Jerusalem, wasn't just any ordinary pool. Its waters were believed to have special powers, a bit like a magical fountain, where people sought healing from all sorts of ailments. Crowds always gather around its edges, hoping for a miraculous cure their faith and desperation noticeable in the air. The scene when Jesus arrived, among the throngs of people lay a man who hadn't walked for nearly four decades. Can you imagine? 38 years of relying on others, of watching life pass by from a stationary position. It's no wonder his encounter with Jesus became the stuff of legends. When Jesus spoke those words of healing, it must have felt like a dream. One moment, he's lying there, perhaps resigned to his fate. And the next, he's being told to stand up and walk, the disbelief followed by the sheer joy coursing through his veins as he rose to his feet, strength flooding back into his limbs. News of such a miracle has spread like wildfire, drawing even more people to the pool of. Bethesda, each with their hopes and dreams of healing. But beyond the stories of miraculous healings, Jerusalem holds even more mysteries waiting to be uncovered. It's as if the city itself is a treasure trove of ancient secrets, each discovery sparking debates and discussions among scholars and doubters alike in the secrets of Jerusalem's ancient palace. A team of Israeli scholars made an incredible discovery. They stumbled upon what they believe is an impressive palace, dating back to the biblical era of the Jewish kingdom. This remarkable palace sits about three kilometers south of Jerusalem's old city. It's not just any ordinary find, it's a jewel collection of ancient wonders. Imagine walking through the ruins and seeing intricately carved stone buildings rising from the ground gazing upon artifacts that once belonged to the grand structure, each one whispering stories of the past. Among these treasures are three beautifully decorated stone capitals that used to sit atop columns, adding to the palace's majestic aura. Archaeologists couldn't believe their luck when they found details of decorated window frames too. What's truly extraordinary is how well preserved these artifacts are, carefully hidden away at the site for centuries. But the mystery is why are these valuable objects buried in such a secretive manner? It's a puzzle that has everyone scratching their heads. The prevailing theory suggests that the palace dates back to the 8th or 7th century BC, a time known as the First Temple Period. 
This period was a significant chapter in ancient history, spanning from the 10th to the 6th century BC. Visitors can't help but marvel at the column capitals, hailed as some of the most beautiful examples of royal architecture. The Israel Antiquities Authority has hailed these recent pits as a breathtaking revelation from the time of the First Temple. It's a discovery that's not just rewriting history books, but also captivating the imagination of people worldwide. Professor Yaakov Billig, the leader of the excavation team, has been completely excited by a curious discovery. Two ancient capitals neatly stacked atop each other in a mysterious burial. He's been deeply pondering over the puzzling situations of their covering, diving into the possible reasons behind such an act. This finding is just one among the many interesting mysteries that archaeologists eagerly await uncovering. The excavation site has also revealed the remains of a magnificent palace, likely a grand structure, which met its demise during the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem in 586 BC. The fortunate citizens of this palace would have enjoyed a breathtaking view of what we now know as the City of David and the sacred area that holds the Jewish Temple. For the Jewish community, this place holds considerable importance, being referred to as the Temple Mount, while Muslims call it Haram al-Sharif. The Israel Antiquities Authority suggests that the occupants of this palace were probably either Judean kings or a well-known noble family, judging by the strategic location and the majesty of the structure. The carvings on the capitals, those striking decorations atop sections, are like windows into the past. Skilled artisans painstakingly chiseled away at stone to create intricate designs that tell stories of ancient times. These patterns aren't just random, they're like snapshots of history, capturing the essence of life in the kingdoms of Judah and Israel. Moreover, how these same designs have surpassed time and found a place in modern-day currency is intriguing. The hustle and activity of people using the five shekel coin in present-day Israel, unaware perhaps of the rich historical legacy they carry in their pockets. It's like carrying a piece of ancient history with them wherever they go. But as with any mystery from the past, there are always doubters. Some experts raise doubts about the authenticity of the City of David story, provoking interest and debate. It's as if they're detectives solving clues from the past, trying to piece together the puzzle of ancient civilizations. These recent discoveries in Jerusalem have set imaginations on fire, painting vivid pictures of life in biblical times. But amidst the excitement, it's important to remember that history isn't always black and white. Just like a good mystery novel, there are twists and turns and interpretations can vary widely. So while these findings shed light on the historical context of biblical stories, they leave room for speculation and further exploration. Jerusalem's mysterious past in 2007, researchers stumbled upon a fascinating discovery near a corner. Two ancient pottery seals, blackened by fire, dating back to the time when Solomon's temple was destroyed, were found. Etched onto each seal were Hebrew names, Yukal ben Shelia and Alaho ben Pasor. But what's the link between these seals and David's palace during the reign of King Zedekiah? Legend has it that during the prophet Jeremiah's ominous prophecy of the city's demise, King Zedekiah, in a fit of rage, dispatched four of his ministers to silence him by casting him into a pit. Strangely enough, two of the ministers' names correspond to those found on the preserved seals, Yokel ben Shalomi and Gedaliahu ben Pasor. Near this historical corner, a remarkable discovery awaited. A pediment gable, uncovered and now exhibited in the Israel Museum, marks back to the time of David. Across from this corner stands a replica of David's palace, depicted on the Israeli five shekel coin. At the base of what is believed to be David's palace lie remnants of ancient homes, including two well-preserved columns. Among these ruins, the remains of a lavish two-story house suggest opulence. Its owner likely enjoyed the proximity to the king's home and boasted luxuries like a private toilet with a separate entrance. Remarkably, analysis of the 2,600-year-old bacteria found in this toilet revealed the diet of its last occupant, a lover of green salads and uncooked meat. Venturing westward from the city's entrance, the Gavadi parking lot excavation reveals layers of history spanning 11 distinct civilizations. In 2008, the dig uncovered the basement of a huge Roman villa, possibly once belonging to the Assyrian Queen Helen, who embraced Judaism during the Second Temple period. Among the treasures unearthed was a single gold earring adorned with pearls and precious stones. Perhaps once gracing the queen's ear, further discoveries emerged, including a cache of 264 gold coins hidden within a Byzantine building's wall, 
dated just before the Persian invasion in 6113 CE. These findings are mere glimpses into the rich hanging of Jerusalem's history, a city marked by confusion yet punctuated by divine reminders. As Jerusalem endured uprisings, each excavation unearthed artifacts, strengthening the enduring presence of God. May the people of Israel forever hold steadfast in their faith, eagerly awaiting the promised day of salvation, unraveling history, faith, and spiritual enlightenment. In the stories told in the Gospels, Jesus performed a miraculous act of healing. He helped a blind man see again by putting mud on his eyes and telling him to wash in the special waters of the Pool of Siloam. This pool was very important for people making religious journeys to Jerusalem. It wasn't just any pool. It was used for cleaning rituals and also provided drinking water. People often set up camp near it, and Jesus likely visited it too, perhaps even to quench his thirst. There's a discussion happening between the Israel Antiquities Authority and the Greek Orthodox Church which owns the site. They're talking about digging up more of the area. They think the pool is under a garden with lots of beautiful trees. Archaeologists are excited about this because they want to explore it further. They want to find and remove old pipes that connect the square and the aqueduct to the pool steps. Ronnie Reich, an archaeologist from the University of Haya, paints an amazing picture of what the ancient city was like through his descriptions. As they listen, they can almost feel like they're there, experiencing the grandeur of the Pool of Siloam. This place isn't just a boring water tank. It's incredibly meaningful for people who follow Jewish customs. It's a place where they could purify themselves before prayers. Some experts even think it might have been like a nice Roman bath, a place for relaxation and enjoyment. As they venture deeper into the mysteries of history, they come across mysteries that make them think deeply. The discovery of the Pool of Siloam holds immense significance for Christians. It provides comfort to those who have a strong belief in Christian teachings. In Christianity, water is seen as a symbol of purification and starting anew. This makes the Pool of Siloam a powerful symbol of baptism, which is a significant ritual in the Christian faith. This symbolism captures the essence of Christian ceremonies, creating a direct connection between the stories in the Bible and the experiences of believers today. It promotes the idea of salvation through faith. Portraying the Pool of Salaam as a physical representation of spiritual rebirth, where sins are washed away and believers are transformed through the act of baptism. The Pool of Salaam isn't just an archaeological find, it's a sacred place for Christians serving as a cornerstone of their faith. It's deeply intertwined with biblical stories and is honored as an adventure site. The waters of this pool are not only believed to have physical healing properties, but also hold historical and spiritual truths. For Christians, the Pool of Siloam is an important aspect of their religious practice, providing strength and guidance on their spiritual journeys. It connects them to the roots of their faith and offers solace in times of uncertainty. On the other hand, atheists may seek tangible evidence rather than relying on faith alone. Yet, both believers and non-believers acknowledge the profound impact of faith in inspiring people and unraveling the mysteries of the world. The Solemn Pool in Jerusalem is like a mysterious treasure chest full of secrets and inspiration. When they venture into the depths of this ancient pool, they embark on a special adventure that solves the threads of spirituality and history woven within its waters. As they explore the Salam Pool, they're not just stepping into a historical site. They're delving into the very essence of faith and the tales of old. Each tide in the water tells a story, each stone whispers ancient wisdom, and every corner is alive with symbolism that sparks our imagination. This place urges us to ponder how our beliefs and understanding of the world are shaped by both faith and the tales of yore. It's as if the solemn pool stands as a bridge connecting the past to the present, reminding us of the profound interplay between history and our current lives. In essence, the Salam pool isn't just a relic of the past, it's a beacon guiding us through the mysteries of time, inviting us to ponder the remarkable connection between ancient narratives and our modern existence. What are your thoughts on this terrifying incident discovered in Jerusalem?